Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I just want to give some quick steps that you can take to personalize RStudio. This is primarily for beginner users of RStudio, but hey, you never know, some uh, longtime users of RStudio may not have ever taken advantage of some of these tools and options that are available in RStudio. We're going to look at changing your paint layout, changing some uh, background colors and font colors, and setting up some changes to make your code easier to read. Before we get into that, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to the channel. And if at the end of the video you found anything that helped you out, please post a comment or at least like the video. That will really help us out. So let's go ahead and get into personalizing our studio. After you first install our studio, this is pretty much the layout that you're going to see. You have the console pane on the left, the environment history connections and tutorial panes at the top right, files, plots, packages, help, and viewer tabs at the lower right. Now, all of this can be customized, including the color of the background on this. A lot of people prefer to have the console at the top right and uh, the environment pane down at the bottom left. But there's also a source pane and you typically won't see that until a document has been opened and you can do that by just clicking here and it will expand and give you an untitled document but we can go ahead and move these around and the easiest way to do that is through the tools menu global options and then pane layout which is the fifth item down in the column on the left now you can see we have the source column in the left, console at the bottom left, environment at the top right, files at the bottom right. And you can even see in these two panes, we've got a bunch of check boxes. So we can include extras in those panes. If we want to put the plots at the top right up with the environment, we can do that. Notice when I checked that, it unchecked it from the files pane. I'm going to leave it down there. I don't necessarily need this connection, so I'll uncheck that. And I don't need this build. I'm just going to leave environment, history, and tutorial for that top right pane. But you know what? I want the console pane up there. So I'm going to click this drop down. I'm going to select console, and the two of those panes will swap. There we go. Now we can go ahead and click apply, and we'll see that the environment pane is now at the bottom left console pane is at the top right but I also want to add an additional source column because occasionally I want to work with multiple documents at a time and our screens are large enough that we've got plenty of room for that so I'm going to click this add column what that does is add this source column along the left side it doesn't add multiple panes just a single column I'm going to go ahead and click OK so we can see what that looks like. Now we've got this extra source pane over here, the middle source pane, environment, and the uh, bottom pane, console at the top right pane, and files, plots, packages, help viewer, and presentation. Oh, you know what? I don't need that presentation tab in there. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it for now. It's not something I use a lot, so I'm going to take it out just so it's less distracting while being there. I'm going to click OK. There we go. Now we've customized our pane layout. We've added an extra source column, which is great for working uh, with multiple documents. But I want to show you one thing about that extra source column. If we have a document open here in this column and we close that just that document and there's no other tabs up here for multiple documents let's add another document right now and we have two untitled documents if we close one we're okay if we close them both that source column is going to disappear so we'll have to add the source column back in so that's one issue but you can do that quickly here with this view panes add source column you can also see there's a shortcut for it control f7 so we can add that you also might have noticed in this view 
menu under the panes that there is a console on left, console on right. So we can quickly switch those as well. Again, that's view in the panes, console left or console right. And you'll see in that panes tab, there's a bunch of zooms. You can zoom in on just some uh, features. Within a pane, if we just want to zoom the plots, it will zoom all of those out. We also have a panes button here in the secondary menu bar. We can show all panes. That will give us all our panes back. So those are some quick ways to navigate around our studio and set up some personalization features. Now, what if we want to change the colors in here? I'm going to close this so we don't have this extra source column for now. The white background is pretty bright. I prefer a black background. So under the tools menu, under global options, the fourth item down is appearance. The easiest way to do this is to select one of these themes down here at the bottom. Some of them will say dark, pastel on dark, solarized dark, solarized light. So you have all sorts of options here to choose from. Let's just select this pastel on dark. We'll click OK and it will apply that. Now we've got a nice dark background. I like it with the black, but like I said, you can select other themes in there we saw that brown theme you can come in here and modify the font sizes the zoom size i prefer just to select one of the themes keep it simple now the other thing that i recommend doing is in your code is to make sure that you have these check boxes all checked you can play around with those and modify those but these should be the default and they really help keep your your code a little bit more organized when you're writing so i recommend leaving those as they are but go ahead and play around with them see how they function if you want now under the display tab we have three options at the bottom here yours may not be checked so these checkboxes may be unchecked on yours but within these options under the syntax the highlight our function calls the enable preview of named and hexadecimal colors and the rainbow parentheses it really makes your code stand out let's do a quick comparison so we can see so we'll just use some code here we'll do geom point and I don't have any data loaded so this won't actually produce anything but we can we just want to see how the the actual coding looks we'll do date sale and then we'll do color equals and we'll just say, if I can spell it correctly, navy. Now you'll, you see how that looks here. We've got these rainbow parentheses, so we can see which ones match. You know, these pink ones are on the outside. These orange ones are on the inside. Uh, the color is highlighted, and it gives you a preview. And the function names are highlighted as well. So let's go back to the tools menu, the global options code the second option display i'm going to uncheck these three and click apply and see how that changes now the function names are in the same font color as the variables uh, the color navy doesn't have a preview and the parentheses are all the same color as well so it's harder to see which one goes with which without clicking right next to that parenthesis where I'm going to turn those back on and apply, and you can see that difference again. 
So those are some quick ways to personalize our studio to your liking. Play around with some of those themes in there. Find a, a color set that works for you. I recommend changing the, uh, uh, the settings on the coating so that it, it pops a little bit better, makes it easier to read. And uh, play around with the different pane locations, adding a source column. See if that helps your workflow in our studio. Again, thanks for watching. Hope this helps you out. If it did, please leave some comments, like the video, and consider subscribing.